In this video, we're going to get a tour of the user interface of Plasticity, so stay tuned. When you first get started in Plasticity, with any program, I suggest getting comfortable with the user interface, how to move the model around, how to navigate where things are. So first, holding down the middle mouse wheel will let you do a free rotate. Right mouse button will let you pan, and then of course the wheel will let you zoom in and out. If you're used to another program, you can go into your preferences and change. There are a couple of presets in here, Blender, Maya, Moai, 3DS, and you can pick those, and then it'll be a little bit more intuitive for you. So once you get the handle of just simply moving this around and rotating it, then we want to talk about the standard views. We've got a view cube where we can click on X, Y, and Z. We can also use shortcut keys on the number pad. Now the number pad and the numbers at the top of your keyboard are going to behave different. They're tagged to different things, but one is going to be your front view, three is going to be right, and seven is going to be top. Now if we rotate this back around, the number five is also going to allow you to go between perspective and orthographic view. Again, we can always do this by clicking on X, Y, or Z up here. We can also toggle on the perspective and ortho by using this button at the top right. We can toggle on and off the overlay if you want to get rid of the construction plane and the axes. We can toggle on and off x-ray. And then this button on the right is toggling on and off render mode. But if we right click on this, there are more options. You can see that we can display zebra stripes. We can change the way that the object is displayed. And we also have the option to select individual solids or groups of solids. Hit the M key on the keyboard and apply a custom material. So what we have here, let's go ahead and let's just change this to a green color. I'm going to right click and say OK. And notice that it doesn't change. And that's because we need to toggle on the render mode. And now you can see we see it in green. Now this is just a flat cube, so it doesn't really change much on the screen for us. But as we begin to create more complex designs, that's going to be pretty helpful. We can toggle off the render mode and it just goes back to that gray cube. So once we're familiar with just rotating, panning, zooming, and snapping to the different views, the next thing is understanding that we have options for things like snapping to the grid and enable snapping for the objects. And if we hit these three dots over here, you can see that they're individual options for face, curve, and edge. In this video, we're not going to be going through a ton of shortcut keys for things like edge snapping and locking to edges. There are a lot of those built into plasticity, but again, we're doing a basic introduction to the UI. The construction planes allow you to quickly and easily do things like draw curves on those construction planes. We can use shortcuts like X, Y, and Z. If I want to start to sketch up in the Z direction, I can hit Z. If I want to sketch in the X direction, I can hit X. And then you can see that is sort of going up in space. It started out on that construction plane, and then we started sketching in 3D space. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And note that we can switch that construction plane to the different planes. We can base it off of our current view. We can also base it off of a selection. So there are great options here to allow us to quickly make that geometry. As we go down, you'll notice that there is a performance section here. This is pretty handy, especially if you start to have really heavy or large models. You can kind of get an idea of the performance that's going on. Um, not really something that I need to worry about now with a cube on the screen, but this can be pretty nice if you start to notice some, some issues. The bottom right, there are three dots that will show all the commands. There is a search function here, and it also shows the shortcut keys. So for example, Shift and B is a corner box. So if I hit Shift and B on the keyboard, I can quickly start drawing a box and manipulate this on the screen. The information about that is in the bottom left. Any shortcut keys that apply to this are in the bottom right. So for example, as I start to drag it over this other box, I can hit Q to join it together, W for the difference, or Shift and E for the intersect. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. If I start to overlap this and say W, um, I can select the target body and I can remove that box from it. Right click to accept it and now we've made that change. So once again, it's really quick for us to go through the process, but you don't really need to go through this menu every time you want to do something. Because in plasticity, all of the commands are going to be based on your selection. So for example, there's nothing displayed right now. If I select the box, you'll notice a handful of things pop up. We have unjoin, which will turn this into individual surfaces, which are called sheets. 
we have an array for rectangular and radial arrays, and then we also have project curve onto curve or surface. What we want to do is make an additional selection. So for example, select this face. This automatically brings up our offset tool, which allows us to pull this out in 3D space and taper it. But notice that we have additional options that are popping up now. Draft face, match face, we've got sweep, we've got revolve, we've got extrude, we've got a loft option, and we've got hollow surface if we want to shell it out. We've got offset curve, and then we've got a rebuild. And again, the tool that's currently being used is displayed in the bottom left-hand corner. So this is extremely helpful because it's going to be based on the selection and you can figure out what you need to do. So for example, if we select an edge, pulling this out gives us a fillet, pulling this in gives us a chamfer. Extremely quick, we didn't have to hit any keys, all we had to do was select the thing that we wanted. This also has a couple of cool options. So for example, L on the keyboard will allow us to limit where that fillet goes to. So this can allow us to make, for example, a chamfer here and a fillet on part of it and create some pretty unique geometry pretty quickly. So without having to go through the process of creating this by creating sketches, extruding geometry, adding these fillets, we just make a couple clicks, right click to accept it, and we're good. So that's a basic look at those tools that pop up based on your selection. There are more, and of course these are tied to shortcut keys. So for example, if I click Alt and J, Alt and J is going to unjoin what I have selected. This turns this solid body into what we call individual sheets or surfaces. If I take one of these and I use my shortcut key G for move, which is the same as Blender, notice that now I've got an individual surface here and the rest of this is just left open. So plasticity not only has solid modeling, but we also have surface modeling. We're gonna get into that a little bit in our example, but right now we just wanna be familiar with where we access tools. So bottom right, these are going to be tools that we'll use based on our selection, things like lofts, revolves, extrude, sweeps. The stuff in the bottom left, move, rotate, scale, our boolean to combine things together. We have options to cut, uh, cut our solids with curves, mirror, and then duplicate an object, for example. Uh, so if we do shift and D and we duplicate this, I can go ahead and pull it out, right click to accept, R to rotate, rotate this around, maybe rotate it this way a little bit, right click to accept, and now we've made a copy of that as a sheet. Once again, all of these can be done by using shortcut keys, but for right now, we're focusing on just the access of the tools. Another area that we wanna focus on are going to be the curves that we can create and some of the primitives as well. We've already seen the primitive by using Shift and B, but this allows us to create a box in 3D, which again is a solid, the curves allow us to draw things like lines, splines, circles, and polygons. Once we close this off, it's gonna automatically be selected. If we left click again, we can simply pull that into 3D to create a solid object. So now we've got solids, we've got sheets or surfaces, and then we've got curves. These are the three main types of geometry that we'll be working with in plasticity. So with that in mind, we also wanna talk a bit about the differences between the tools and when we can use them. So for that example, I'm gonna create two splines, right click, I'm gonna create another one over here, right click. If we create a third spline, and if you see a small arrow in the left corner, you can hold down the left mouse button and this will give you additional options for things that you can create. But if we create a spline and we start to sketch the spline between another spline, notice that we have a tangent option but in reality, to create a nice smooth curve between two splines, what we wanna do is select the endpoints and we wanna use the loft command. This will allow us to create a curve that is G1, G2, or G3 continuous between those two curves. So a great option to quickly and easily blend multiple curves together, even if they're in 3D. Which brings me to my last point of the UI, and that is going to be the selection at the top left. Now this is set to all by default, which means that we can select the modes, the bodies, we can select faces, edges, and an individual control point or a vertice. What we can do also is use the numbers on the keyboard, one, two, three, four, and five for all of those to toggle what we're selecting. So for example, if I only wanna select control points, I can select these, I can use G on the keyboard, and I can manipulate their position to change that curve. 
If I only want to select edges, then you can see I can select those edges here. I can maybe make a fillet, right click. If I want to select only faces, I can grab a face, pull that up in 3D, right click, accept that for just box objects, solids, surfaces, whatever the case might be. Again, G, we can move that around or five to select all. So that is the basic overview to the UI. Of course, there is more underneath it that we can talk about, things like grouping these different categories together, adding sheets to a group, adding solids to a group. But that gives you a basic idea of how you can work inside of Plasticity. So we're going to start a new document. So if you do want some more practice, make sure that you check out the following videos on solid modeling as well as using curves and building surfaces. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.